sticks all the way back. Alright, all there is to it. Okay, no more. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> Alright, so we are here with the uh, Al Canyon Glider Port, and one of my past students uh, who's about ready to graduate, Scott Bragg, is going to take me up on a flight for my first time. So Scott, show us around the hangar, man. All right. All you need is, is the uh, main style hangar, this is where we keep uh, the majority of the airplanes. Uh, we have uh, two club airplanes in here, and the other airplanes are uh, privately owned. Right here we have two glider trailers. Each glider uh, can break down into a trailer so that you know, if you land out in the field somewhere, your friends can come get you. If you're uh, going to a different flight and going to Oshkosh, uh, you can just take it with you and not have to fly it anywhere. Uh, so just for the off-season, a lot of guys pack their clubs, leave their trailers in here. This is the club's uh, two-place high-performance glider. It's a Grove 103. Uh, owned and operated by the club. We have it taken apart because it's uh, gonna, going to go get the canopies replaced. This was the ship that we were going to take you up in, uh, but it wouldn't fly very well right now. So pretty much each glider will break down somewhere like this. The wings come out. Uh, it will fit into a trailer. This trailer doesn't have a cover just because it's kind of a universal trailer. Uh, so it just sits up in here. It has a, uh, a saddle up here. Everything's pretty well bolted down so it doesn't move or slide. And the wings will strap into here and fold up. Uh, they are just leaving the wings here for now because they don't need them. So let's get locked up. Moving along, we have uh, the brother of the, uh, of the airplane that we're going to go up in. This is a Schweitzer 232. Uh, it's used a lot for uh, aerobatic stuff. It was used a lot in the, the uh, test for weather patterns. Both the, or a lot of the records for uh, highest altitude uh, from base point were done in a glider just like this. Uh, mostly just because it has a massive canopy so you can dress warmly enough to go that high. <coughs> this is just a little uh, tractor we use to pull the gliders around the field. Here we have uh, a few more glider trailers. Right here is the club's single place glider. It only fits one person. Uh, this one's you know, a lot of fun to fly. It uh, has about a 40 to 1 glider glide ratio, so every 40 feet forward it'll drop only a foot. Uh, so it has the best, one, uh, best glide ratio of the club on the side. We open it. Open it. Up. Yeah. As, as you can see, the canopy is pretty basic. Uh, it's very flat. You know, you get in there and you're basically laying down. But you have the same controls. You have your altimeter, two vertical airspeed indicators, uh, airspeed indicator, and that's these two are. It's a flight computer, which is uh, a little weird on this airplane. But then down here we have a radio. We have a tow release and a canopy jettison. <laughs> but other than that, it's uh, pretty basic. You have flight control here. Um, so let's uh, show the kids back at the, in the classroom, how do you move the ailerons? There's a little control stick right here, and if uh, it actually acts like a lot like the right joystick of any controller. So you pull back, and you look at the elevator. You can yeah. see it going up and down. Yep. You go left and right, you can see the uh, left and right. Got it. And then the rudders are controlled. There's two little foot pedals up in here, so you push it down with your feet. Kind of like a gas and brake in a car. That would the rudders. Nice. 
and you guys have done a lot with things like this, but... Uh, we had talked about spoilers and air brakes. Almost every glider will have some variation spoiler. Some of you have uh, dive brakes, uh, some of the high performance ones do have flaps, but we use those for landing. Speed. So you use them for landing, you said? Yeah. And uh, you'll see a little bit of that when we go up. Also in here we have an oxygen tank right back in here. There's different uh, FAA requirements for, you know, if you're at a certain altitude you need the oxygen, and at a certain uh, altitude your passengers need oxygen, things like that. So what's the highest you've ever gone up? Uh, I've gone about... Th uh, 13,500 feet above sea level. Uh, from here, it's about a mile and three miles above ground. Uh, and that's, you know, with no engine whatsoever. So it's just riding the air currents. Oh, there's something else up there. Okay. Put that up. Very cool. <laughs> and we'll be taking off the runway out here? Yeah, there's a. Uh, black paved strip out there. The club uh, has about eight runways, but there's not much wind today, but we'll go ahead and take off into the wind onto the nice smooth runway. Perfect. Out there you can see more. And whose plan is this guy? Uh, that's one of my old instructors. It's a, uh, it's a 172 or 182. A lot of the guys here just like to fly their own plane in. So a little kudos to the um to this uh, hangar, how do you go about getting your gliders license and, and being able to member and all that stuff here? Uh, to be a member, you can go onto the website. It's uh, soar, S-O-A-R, uh, C-S-A dot org. Uh, well, there's you know, hundreds of links in there. It'll tell you how to be a member. Student, uh, students of uh, high school or college get a slightly redu reduced rate, but because it's a club, you pay you know one uh, initi initiation fee, a small monthly due, and then you pay per tow. Uh, which isn't a very uh, a lot today. I don't know. I'll probably spend thirty eight dollars towing you up, um, and then I pay like eleven cents a minute for glider rental. So, any you yeah, that would be pretty much anything going to uh, any uh, commercial operation. Before Perfect. we uh, take up and then uh, <laughs> take me up on my first flight, tell the viewers where you're going to school next year. I'm planning on going to uh, uh, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott, Arizona, double majoring in aerospace engineering and aeronautical science, which is basically a flying degree. Sweet. So full circle here, we've got our first student who started a Mesa program, and he started actually with, with me and a couple other kids, and this is the first graduate, and he's actually going to go and uh, live the dream and actually do it for reals, which is which is very scary. Without I'm a, me, I, there would be no Mesa. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little scared right now, but I think I can handle it. Um, if I'm going to be teaching this stuff, I better be able to go up in a glider and fly. So this is a really cool opportunity, and um, let's go fly. All right. You ready to pick your teacher up? Flight check, Scott. I did most of it before you got here, but uh, actually, right down here, you have a little list. It has different elements. So, here we got the master radios on, the seats are set, weight and balance are already calculated, rudder pedals are good, landing gear is down and welded, controls are free, altimeter is good, trying to set. Okay, we're 
Good. So what are you trying to do right now? Like you're trying to find some sort of wind or like some, uh, not some really. sort of lift or anything like that? Or you uh, just not really much of today. Just kind of, you know, it's kind of a, not the best day for it. We're doing really well in forward today, but right now I'm just flying around. We're going to go out by this power plant. Uh, yeah. I think probably get back. I'm keeping an eye on the altimeter and the airspeed. Uh, there's a certain speed which this glider will fly, you know, the best, the, the best lift over drag speed, the best distance forward for every foot drop. This one at best has about a 23 to 1 uh, glide ratio, which is pretty bad, but uh, we'll make do with it. We're high enough that we can, we can still do a few fun things. Cool. So you're saying you're getting some pretty good thermals over this? We usually, yeah, the uh, ground isn't hot enough to uh, heat up the air and cause the thermal here. Yeah. Alright, so Scott's wanting to show us how to perform a stall, correct? Yeah, so you guys have been flying around a little bit, and you know, when your airplane gets too slow, uh, you know, the nose drops and you have no control. That's called a stall, so the wings don't generate enough lift to uh, keep the airplane in the fluid anymore. So I'm going to demonstrate one now, so what I'm going to do is to keep a level uh, attitude and then I'm going to pull back on this stick until it loses that airspeed. The nose will drop, it's called a bump, and we can just kind of basically drop it 200 feet out of the sky, uh, and then within uh, 200 feet I'll recover from it. Are you ready? Alright, I'm ready. Alright, straight forward. Pull back slightly. Up. Up. There's me, gets quiet, sticks all the way back. Alright, all there is to it. Okay, no more. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. No more, Maverick. <laughs> Alright, so the viewers are probably going to ask, how fast are we going? Uh, right now we're going about 55 uh, nautical miles per hour. It's about 6,000 feet uh, versus 5,280, like a statue mile. So we're going about you know, 60 miles per hour, I'd say. Not that fast. No, it doesn't feel like that fast. <laughs> Where's the runway down there? Okay. Alright, so for those of you who are watching and you're not familiar with Colorado, that right there is the Plains. Going this way is Wyoming. And then Scott will take us back west here is the Rockies. 
and then obviously southern Colorado going down towards Denver would be that way. Point it forward and I'll explain the string a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, explain the a string. A while ago I did an episode with you guys about always wanting a rudder. And I talked about how uh, there's a certain aerodynamic flaw uh, in every airplane. And so when it's straightened forward, it's most aerodynamic. But as soon as we turn the wings, you can see that string go off to the side. That's why I like to use a rudder to point the nose in the direction that it's turning. So that way we stay aerodynamic and stay efficient at the turn. So if you look at the string again, if I don't if I don't use enough rudder and too much aileron, you go into what's called a slip. If I use too much rudder, the string goes to the other side, and you get into what's called a skid. And a lot of people get in trouble with skids because then you get into what's called a spin. And that's actually pretty dangerous to get into a spin. It's pretty hard in this airplane to get into a spin. I've tried a few times, I just don't have them. Uh, and some of the other single phase fighters they don't break pretty easily. So I'm turning what's called a downhill leg. I'm, for, I'm turning away from the direction that I'm going to end up landing, uh, just so I can get my position right. And I'm going to go down here a little bit more, and then we're going to turn base, uh, which is perpendicular to the right way, and then we'll turn final, and then we'll go straight down the left way. Preparing for landing. Okay. That's this target right there. Sorry, viewers. Well, that's all there is to it. Job well done, dude. <laughs> Student is now flying the teacher. I like it. Oh, we don't have a cameraman. And uh, Scott took me up uh, about 3,000 feet. 3,000 feet. 3,000 feet ish. And it was a very awesome, smooth flight. He's a good pilot. And. Uh, and I'm very proud of him for what he's done over the past five years since starting the Mesa Arts pro pro Program, you know, five years ago. And, uh, you know, being our first graduate and, you know, going to the aeronautical school and becoming a pilot and doing the whole engineering bit, you know, that's, uh, you're leading by example, dude. So, um, very cool. Thanks for watching. <laughs>